We all love our pets, whether you live at a beach house in Los Angeles or sleep under your desk in New York City. And I was wondering, with all the different dog breeds out there, if certain cities had certain preferences for different types of dogs. Like, do New York people prefer different types of dogs than do Los Angeles people? To figure this out, I needed some data, so I went to PetFinder.com to see if I could learn anything by browsing their adoption listings, which would give me a sense of what types of animals are being adopted in New York or Los Angeles. So I can see I have about 6,000 dogs here within 100 miles of me in New York, and I can browse through this and get a sense for the type of breeds being adopted. But as much as I love looking at dog photos all day, I'm not going to sit here and manually type in 6,000 different types of dogs into a spreadsheet. I need to do something automated to make sense of this data. And thankfully, PetFinder offers this absolutely wonderful API, which will give me programmatic access to hundreds of thousands of pets. I can query them by different criteria like pet characteristics or in my case, location. We simply need a PetFinder account, which is free to create. I just made one today and you also need a pet finder api key with our developer program so if you click on this link and you don't yet have a developer account you'll see a button on the bottom to fill out a simple form and you just give your application a name and you instantly get an api key no application process you'll also get a secret here and you'll be able to do up to 1000 api calls per day with a ridiculous 50 requests per second i don't recommend doing that so once you have your api key and secret you then need to generate an access token using oauth so you basically just run this curl command here and put in your client ID and your secret here and they'll give you back an access token and the response. So you need to save that access token. It'll be good for about an hour. And then you can start making requests here by putting in your access token under the authorization header. And in this example, we're just going to get some animals and you can see what the response looks like. They give you a lot of structured data. It's more or less flat. And pagination is pretty simple. You just give it a page number like one, two, three, four in the get parameters. And this is usually the time where you say, oh great, another API. I get to write custom code to figure out how to use this thing and consume its data. Well, on this channel, we don't like to reinvent the wheel. So I'm going to show you how to use the Steve C data platform to pull bulk CSVs from this API without writing any code. Full disclosure, this is a paid product that I own. If you'd rather not spend any money, you're free to use this API and write your own client. And if you're interested, you can skip ahead to the results section. I'll put a timestamp below where we go over the results of our analysis. So here's the Steve C Data Pet Finder integration I built. It'll allow you to quickly get CSV files out of their API extremely easily. And these are the two endpoints I started with. So if you sign up with a link in the description, you'll see this page where you can query the endpoints. And here, instead of running that nasty curl command, I can just put in my API key from PetFinder and the secret, and I'll get back my access token I can then copy and paste for future use. Then I can paste it into the animals endpoint here and just use the default parameters. This will give me back all of the animals in PetFinder of all locations, types, breeds, cats, dogs, rabbits, you name it. So I can see a preview of the results here that Steve C parsed out for me. And I can download this as a CSV file, which is much easier to work with than that JSON blob we saw earlier. And if we need to get all the pets, like the 6,000 in the search results, I can use this formula here, which imports a workflow into my account, which will take care of pagination for me. So I just put in my access token and here I'm going to give it New York City, New York, and then I'm going to sort it by distance. So I get the pets closest to the heart of New York first, and it should expand out in a hundred mile radius. And here I can see the workflow is set to auto increment the page by one each time. So it's going to keep making a request to the API page by page and then combine the results until it gets to the very end. So here are all my New York pets. You'll see I got about 13,000 because I didn't specify dogs or cats this time. I just got all the possible pets. And I did this same thing for Los Angeles, California to get all of those pets. And there were fewer pets there. I only got about 9,000 and you'll see that it stopped at page 90. That's 20,000 pets all available for adoption right now. So we should all do our part and go adopt an animal if we can. But back to the data to figure out what's going on with all this pet data, I uploaded these two CSV files into Google Drive so we can use Google Colab, a free service that lets me run Jupyter Notebooks with Python in the cloud. And you can see here, I simply imported them into pandas as data frames and we're gonna process these and figure out which breeds are more popular between New York versus LA. So first I just wanna take a quick look to make sure the data looks decent. And here I combined all the pets together into a single data frame and I can see 
macro pieces of information like the type of animal, if it's a dog or cat, and the breed, the subbreed, which we're not going to look at in this study, other things like color, gender, we're not going to look at. Again, we just want to look at the breed for now. But first, let's take a look at the overall animal type, like is it a cat, dog, rabbit, etc., and check out the distribution amongst all of the pets. And wow, we can actually see cat is the most popular between New York and LA, followed by dog, no surprise. We have other things like rabbits and birds and other types of small animals. So now let's break this down by location and see if New York perhaps prefers cats over dogs and vice versa. As I could imagine, the climate being colder in New York would be more hospitable to cats. So here in pandas, I just grouped them by animal type and location. Now I'm creating two derivative columns, one for if the row is for New York, the other for Los Angeles, and I'm dividing by the overall pet count so we get a relative distribution. So for example, in New York, I can see the red line that corresponds to New York adoptions is over 50% for cats, but for dogs, the white line, it's over 50% in Los Angeles. So there seems to be a clear preference for dogs in Los Angeles and cats in New York. And then I can see also Los Angeles seems to like rabbits and small and furry animals. Those movie stars out there have some funny tastes. But let's talk about the dog breed. So here I'm gonna filter my data frame to only include dogs and then I'm going to group by the primary breed type. So this is gonna give me a long tail distribution and I can see at the top are the most popular breeds across both New York and Los Angeles. And as I scroll down, I can see different types of breeds that are less and less popular as you get these highly specific and potentially cross-breeded dogs. So now let's answer our original question to see the difference in relative percentage of pets available between New York and Los Angeles. So we're gonna look at the percentages and to do that we need the original total New York and LA dog counts we calculate above. And now we're just going to do some grouping again by the primary breed and the location. And then we're going to get a count for each of those pairs. We're also going to save a picture and a column, which I'll get to later. And now we're gonna create those derivative columns again for relevant rows. So again, if it's in New York, we're gonna divide by the New York dog count and save it. And then the LA, we're gonna do the same thing by the LA dog count. And then we group them again, but this time just by the dog breed and we sum those relative percentages above because we'll only get one value for each row by the primary breed. And we just graph that here and we're gonna have a bar color for each location like we did earlier. So New York is in red, Los Angeles is in white, and we can immediately start seeing some differences in preferences, such as the Labrador Retriever, which is strongly preferred in New York. We can see how high this red bar is compared to the white bar. And if we scroll down for scale, we can see that it makes up about 14% of all dogs available for adoption in the New York area. And this is compared to maybe say 6% in Los Angeles. And then we can find the inverse for some breeds like the mixed breed is more popular in Los Angeles, hound more popular in New York. This German Shepherd and Chihuahua are very popular in Los Angeles. We also see some stickouts like the Siberian Husky and a lot of these other middle parts of the tail are more popular in Los Angeles. More, I'd say, designer dogs or less well-known dogs or specialty dogs like the Bichon Fries and the, this Chewini. I've never heard of that one before. And we can see the tail trickles down to even this little mountain dog here. But I'm not a dog breeder. I have no idea what all these different dog types look like except for the major ones. So why don't we go through this data and whenever I see a large difference between New York and Los Angeles, I want to show a picture of the dog because you remember we saved that photo for the first item in each group when we were doing our group buys. And here we have our most popular dogs and we can see whether they are more popular in New York or Los Angeles. So here we have a Labrador Retriever and more popular in New York and we can see by how much as we saw in the data earlier. And then mixed breed, they're more popular in Los Angeles for whatever reason. Hound dogs, always big in New York, no big surprise there. And Shepherds are more popular in New York, but other breeds like German Shepherds are more popular in Los Angeles. Terriers, Chihuahuas, no surprise there. Don't see too many Chihuahuas here in New York, and that's by a large margin. They're nearly 10% in Los Angeles. And here we have a Boxer breed in New York. Like I mentioned, the German Shepherd is popular in Los Angeles, 11%, which is pretty big. A Beagle, New York dog, no surprise there. So I'm just gonna stop talking now and continue scrolling through the results and I'll let you look at the cute dog photos and data results for yourself.
and I just had to chime in here now that we're at this infamous Chiwini dog, which is somehow popular in Los Angeles, but I've never heard of it in New York. And also this mountain dog, which is 0% here in New York. Well, that sure was fun. I never knew the Labrador Retriever was so popular here in New York compared to other parts of the country. And the German Shepherd was a West Coast thing, but that makes sense because I haven't really seen a whole lot of German Shepherds in New York when I think about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like if you want to see me do some more analysis with this data, or if you have another API or topic you'd like to see me cover on this channel, I'm all ears. Thank you so much for watching. Please like if you learned something, subscribe for more, and check out the link in the description if you'd like to do this sort of data collection for yourself. Thank you so much and stay data driven.